Facebook Live, we have a ride. One more time. Hallelujah. So let's get ready to get it in. Um, I'm about to uh, teach this lesson, right, because this will be the third time I taught it recently. A real simple lesson, and I'm going to teach it again. And the reason I'm going to teach it again because I, I just taught it Sunday, and, and, and it was gone. Charvea told me it wasn't there. I saw a little, it, it was, and I had taught it when I was out of town. I taught it Sunday because I didn't have it from when I taught it out of town. And then um, I taught it Sunday and it's gone. <laughs> Shalom, uh, Aki. Uh, uh, Matayahu, I think, for Coles. Um, I was going to teach something regular today, Coles. I'm trying to see, is that good? Alvin Jones. We got Andre Woods in the building. You hear me? The gang's all here coming on in. Shalom. Shalom, Alvin. Good to see you on, man. Um, yep. Yeah, on The law or I can just teach. I can just teach. If you say yep again, that means I can just teach. And it's good. Al, Frank in the house. Mother Joyce. I can just teach. You know, um, for some reason the enemy fighting me on a simple message. The message I talked on Sunday, gone, uh, Cole. <coughs> so this is going to be the third time me trying to just teach a simple Simple scripture. So let me grab the scripture. Let me grab the scripture. If y'all heard me teach it, then hallelujah. But I'm about to teach it again. <laughs> the word is good. It's alive. Don't worry me. You'll eat. Believe that. You will eat. Let's go to uh St. John's Yachanan 3 and 16, y'all. Who they call St. John. We're going to rock with that. Um, we're going to teach it again. So, let's get ready. Hold on. Let's get ready, y'all. Conference muted. Conference recording started. I want to thank everyone for chiming in. This is Watchman Yahoo to Israel, also known as Pastor Derek Mann, on the evening scripture study on this 24th day in June 2019. <clears throat> this will be the third time that I'll be teaching St. John's 3 and 16 because it never make it into the archives. And I'm trying to archive it and send it. So, here we go. Uh, Spirit of the Most High, we love you and thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Humbleness, we know how. Uh, reverencing your, your presence, needing you, admitting that we need you. We need your purification process. Um... We don't want to be naive to ourselves. We want to be quick and made alive so we can see ourselves as you see us and make the necessary adjustments uh, through your grace, through having faith in you. We're trusting you for the perfection process, delivering us blameless for your presence, and we'll be careful to give you the praise and honor not only now, but forevermore. In the matchless name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we humbly pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and all may. <clears throat> okay. Y'all, uh, Yachanan 3 and 16, also known as St. John 3 and 16. And I'll just read the scripture. It says, For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that is a very powerful scripture. It, it is used often. And so I just want to dive into the scripture. See what the Most High has to say to us, his people. Um, 
for Yah so loved. Now, since we're living in the days, and I want to, I want to be clear with you guys, right? Since we're living in the days where they call evil good and good evil, you, you have to know that. Otherwise, they did a good job on you. I know the old school folk would know better what I'm talking about. The new school folk, I'm praying for you. But there is a difference. There's a new good, which is bad, and a new bad, which is good. There's a new, there's a new, it's been flipped. The game is new. It's, it's, it's weird, right? And I say that to say, in order for you to get the proper food out of the scripture, you got to know the difference between this love and the new love. Because there's a new love that trumps the most high's love that's in the scripture. At least from the devil's perspective, from the prince of the air, from the one that's marketing and brainwashing everybody. The, the same one that's bringing to the table a new grace. Jude talks about a grace that turned that was turned into lasciviousness. It's not the original grace. And there, and there, and there is a, a satanic love that accuses true love of being hate. There's a new love going around. For, for Yah so loved, right? <clears throat> With the real love. Because the word teaches, um, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Somebody that's really, somebody that has your best interest at heart going to tell you the truth, even if it hurts your feelings. Going to tell you the truth, even if it's not popular. There's a love that does right, even if it's threatened with wrong, it's still going to do right. Y'all remember that song, if love and you is wrong, I don't want to be right. That's the prince of the air, setting it up, twisting stuff. And then you got people singing hard as they can with their eyes closed, feeling if I love and you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Soul ties. Getting that, that satanic stuff in your spirit. If loving you is wrong, first of all, it ain't love. If loving you is wrong, it ain't even love. Let's start there. <laughs> but if you want to call it love, if loving you is wrong, then I'm not going to love you. But, but, but love, love works no ill to his neighbor. Look. For Yah so loved the world, right? <clears throat> um, that he went out his way for us. For Yah, for Yah so loved, it caused him to do something. Love, love make you do. Love, love, love will make you do. Um. The word offers a uh, 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 ideology or a theology, more of a theology, of um, loving Yah with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It admits that He's jealous, and that He wants you to love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Right? The Most High say, "Love me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength." All the way down, then He adds, He compiles it, and He says, first seek the kingdom of Yah and His righteousness." And this other stuff, this other worldly stuff will be added to you, right? <clears throat> Which <clears throat> goes hand in hand with, you know, loving him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Now, him being love, he didn't say that from a selfish standpoint, like he's ego tripping. He needs your applause, your your approval, your love. He, he doesn't need that, right? It's in your best interest to love him. Because if 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 you don't, then you end up leaving him for the devil. You end up getting caught up in your carnal nature and leaving him, thereby forfeiting eternal life. He can't give eternal life 
uh, uh, to evil. The only thing he got for evil is eternal damnation. But it, it, it's not going to be eternal life. For, so for, for Yah so loved the world, love causes you to do. A lot of people talk a good game. <clears throat> and he had to complain about that. They draw nigh to me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, right? Love causes action. In your marriage, in your friendships, in your family, love causes you to do right by somebody. Anyone with this fraudulent fake love, y'all need to trade that joke in and get the real one. Because, it, again, it works no ill towards its neighbor. It walks in the spirit of selflessness. And for Yah so loved the world that it caused him to do something. It caused him to give. It said for Yah so loved the world that he gave. Now, if you understand, gave here, he gave his only begotten son. But gave uh, exemplifies the fact that um, the son, the, 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 um, the son was born on earth to rescue a people that would turn on him. Let's start there. The Most High gave his son knowing that people would turn on him. He knew that they would spit on him. He knew that they would rip the beard out of his face. He knew that after he taught them and, and fed them and healed them and ministered to them, that they would spit on him. They would hire the Romans. They would turn on their own brother and hire the Romans because they couldn't kill him. It was illegal. Israel had been stripped of all their rights. Kind of like now. You know, if you, if you have a gun, they're going to blow your brains out. If you just have one. There was a dude sitting in the car and said he had a legal gun in the car and it was legal. And that dude killed him right in front of his girl. Just killed him, murdered him. He didn't even have no threat, nothing. Same type thing. When, 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 when the word says he came unto his own and his own received him not. He came unto his own and his own turned on him and turned him over to the Romans because they wanted to kill him. But they didn't have a legal right to. They was last class citizens. Still today. But they was last class citizens. So they, they, so they turned him over to the Romans so, so he could be crucified. To die a Roman torturous death. So, so the, the word gave is loaded. For Yah so loved the world. Love caused him to do it. Caused him to give his son even though he knew the consequences. Now, for the greater good, he knew that he was sending his son to rescue his son's kinfolk. The Messiah, the Mashiach, is a kinsman redeemer. He came onto his own, the bloodline of Abraham. That's why uh, Romans talked about that the Messiah was born after, uh, after the bloodline of Abraham. They, they were family. Same bloodline. And he came onto his own, and, and his own received him not. So that gave is, is loaded. When, when you start studying and you want to be like the Messiah, you got to study to the point that, that you know, you're his disciple, you're his follower. You got to understand what gave is. What manner of love is this? The woman laid out his life, uh, you know, for the brethren. That, that, type, of, that type of love. That, that, that he walked in a, a, a selflessness. Though he didn't do anything wrong but help folk, the same folks are turned on him, but yet he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's, that, that's all in the gave. That's all in the gave. He gave his son. He gave his son to be the perfect example to a people that was scandalous, backwards, wicked. It's the truth anyhow. Now, as we get deeper in the game, right, we'll find out who the son really was. And then 
we're supposed to be exemplifying the son, which takes away the right for us just to be the recipient without being a participant. Folks like the death, burial, and resurrection as a recipient, as opposed to a participant. We, we got to participate in the salvation. We, li we like a gospel that's one-sided, that the Messiah is his death, burial, and resurrection. We don't want to find out that it's our death, burial, and resurrection, but our death, burial, and resurrection as well. We were baptized into his death, and like he was raised by the power of, of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. If, 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 if they hated the master, they're going to hate the servant. Well, we got to be into be involved, but that's when you find out it will help you in that revelation when you find out who the son really was. So for y'all to love the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish. Um, so here we go. In Yakadon, St. John's y'all, right? In John... And John wanted to say, in the beginning was the word. The word was with Yah, and the word was Yah, right? It sounds like two, don't it? In the beginning was the word. The word was with. When you get to the with, it sounds like it's two people. It gets a little confusing for some folks when you say, but it was Yah, right? In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yah, and the word was Yah. Gets a little tricky, right? Unless you go to the beginning. If you go to the beginning, then the word will uh, translate itself. It will, it will, it will reveal what it's saying itself. It don't need my opinion nor yours. It, it will do it by itself. So if you go to the beginning, because didn't the word say in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah, right? So you go to the beginning, and you see that you know in the beginning Yah created the heavens and earth. And the earth was out without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. It said the spirit of Yah had moved across, you know, the waters, right? And, and, and he said, "Let there be light," and there was light. Well, if, if if he spoke and said, "Let there be light," then he could talk. And the word has gone out of his mouth and will not return unto him void. Will we'll accomplish what he pleased. If he said, let there be light and there was light. Look what the scripture said back in John, right? It said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with Yah and the word was Yah. The same word was in the beginning with Yah. All things were made by him. So all things made by the word. I don't have to go through the whole of creation because he said all things was made by him. All I got to do is just see how he created light. Since all things was made by him, he spoke it. So his, his, his word is not another person in a Godhead. <laughs> he can talk. And Isaiah 44 and 24 say when he formed it all, he was by himself. He was alone. So I said, uh, in the beginning was the word, the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah. The same, which is the word, y'all, the same was in the beginning with Yah. All things was made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. You skip down to the 10th verse and say, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as has received him to them, gave he the power to become the children of Yah. The sons of Yah. But he was in the world and the world's made by him. We know Yah made the world. And then the 14th verse say, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It, 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 was, it, was, it was the word that became flesh. And if the word was to be born, it would be a son or a daughter. It would be a male or a female, y'all. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's why 1 Timothy 3 and 16 say, And without controversy, great is the mystery of Yah, and this Yah was manifested in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached on the Gentile, believed on in the world, and received back up into Kabbalah, back up into glory. Philippians, well, Saul got involved again in Philippians, being found fashioned as a man, 
the word, the, the most high, being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient on death, even the death on that tree. He became a human being. Being found fashioned as a man. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Our perfect example. So that we can pattern our lives after him. For Yah so loved the world, the rescue mission. Ma mankind was in trouble. See, we got to take our theology uh, uh, to the beginning. You're going to come up with a half Painted theology if you start off just at Abraham, if you start off at the flood, if you start, you, you got to start from what was the problem, what is the problem, ain't nothing changed, he's, just, he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore, what was the problem that caused mankind to be in a fallen state, what brought death on the scene, you got to know that, before you can come up with a healthy theology. Israel is waking up to who they are, but we need a little more health in our theological positioning. Because it, from our theological positioning, what is the problem? Adam sinned against Yah. He went against the word. And then the plan of salvation became to come into fruition, into sight. When he said, that he, when he was letting the snake know, letting the serpent know, letting the devil know. That, that the woman's seed is going to bruise his head and, and, and the woman's seed heel is going to be bruised. Going to stomp his head so hard that it's going to bruise his heel. That, that, was, that, was, that was a prophecy saying that, that the Mashiach would come and bruise Satan's kingdom. And you got to know that. Because then you can start going through history, time, through Torah, scriptures, and see the salvation, salvation plan unfolding all the way down to the Most High choosing a nation. What did he choose a nation for? So the Messiah could be born. The elect that was talking about in Romans 9, the, the, the elect was the nation that would, would be blessed, the people, the bloodline will be blessed enough to bring forth the Mashiach. Because the nation that brought forth the Mashiach acted like people too. They started sinning. They had the wardrobe and all that, but they went against the most high too. And then when he picked the nation, he picked a nation for a reason. He picked a nation because of their father Abraham. What did Abraham do to cause the Most High to pick him? He had faith. He had the opposite of Adam. He did what the Most High said do. Adam sold the Most High out for his wife. Abraham didn't. Abraham left his family in search of a place whose builder and maker was uh, Elohim. So because he had faith, because he trusted the Most High, he made a promise to him, the Messiah, the Mashiach is going to come out of your loins. That's why he picked He didn't pick him because of melanin. At one point, like Noah and all of them had melanin. Noah was a, a albino, but he was he still was a he he was a he, he his son put it this way his son his son Ham was black as heck. Noah only had one wife. Read it. So if Noah Noah had one wife. <laughs> Then and he had three children. They, they got the same parents. So 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 if Ham, if, if Ham was black, then what the heck was Seth and, and Japheth? Common sense should hit you eventually. Get away from all this false doctrine.
For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him. You got to know why did he give him? Because of sin? Why did he pick? Uh, why did he need a nation? So that the Messiah could be born to come rescue us? Who did he come to rescue? The nation of Israel? Why did he have to come rescue Israel? Because they acted like heathens? Like everybody else? And turned on the most high? What caused him to uh, choose Abraham? Faith? Someone that obeyed him? What is the key ingredient to having a relationship with the most high? Faith? Someone to believe him and obey him? Well, did he make a promise to Abraham? Yes, he did. He went into a covenant agreement with the nation of Israel and he gonna keep it. But because he chose them and they acted like the heathen, he let the heathen subdue them and whoop them. Now we coming into fruition that he gonna whoop the heathen for touching his children. But from a salvation standpoint, it was always about faith. That's why he say everybody that's Israel is not Israel because everyone that's Israel don't have what their daddy had and that was faith. Somebody's going to take the word and believe and live this thing. Because true salvation is all about death, burial, and resurrection. And that's for Israel too. The, the denouncing of humanity, Adam blew humanity. Him being a man, went against the most high, pronounced death on all people. So humanity is tainted with sin, rebellion, sin, witchcrafty, fickle, sometimes sinful nature, all. All have sinned and come short. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. All of mankind is tainted. So the only, so, 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 so not only is the punishment for sin death, but the only cure for sin is death. He took, he took an impossible situation. It was impossible to escape from a wicked nature. Impossible. Can't be done. The only way you can escape uh, 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 sin, a sinful nature is to die. So the Mashiach came. And he, he didn't give in to his human nature. He obeyed the most high 100%. The fulfillment. He came through Israel to rescue Israel. Using the ingredient that it takes to be rescued and that's faith in him. And what he was going to do is live the perfect example and then die for the sins of the world, for mankind. Die for the sins of the world. And that's exactly what he did. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ain't about no doggone melanin or the lack thereof. You want to talk about the Edomites and Esau? Those are people that were substantiated by their daddy too. Oh, we got a whole bunch of parents running around here that wasn't cool. You got Esau with the type that didn't care nothing about the things of Yah. He cared about his natural life. He was a natural person. He wasn't spiritual. He despised the spirituality. It wasn't important to him. So he sold his birthright, the things of Yah, the responsibility. He sold the right that the Messiah will be born through his family line, the Edomites. He sold that. To his little brother. Because he didn't care nothing about it. And the Most High said. I hate that. I hate unbelief. I hate what Adam did. He turned on me. The spirit of unbelief. He turned on me for his wife. I hate that. He said Jacob I love. Because Jacob uh, uh, wanted the things of the Most High. He wasn't cool. His name means supplant to hustler. He wasn't cool either. But he wanted the Most High. Well all of sin to come short. He wasn't cool either. But he what, what was cool about him, he wanted the most high. 100%. And because he wanted the most high, he wrestled with him and the most high changed his name. From Yakub to, to Israel. And blessed him. 
And that's exactly what he do with all of us. As scandalous as we was when we came to him. The, God, the best array, the gospel came to get us all. And when we received it, we, we became new in him. We repented from who we used to be to become who we should be. We were baptized into his death as well to rise up to become a new creation in him. Because if any man be in the Messiah, he's a new creation, a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm new. I ain't who I used to be. I ain't messing with that cat. He looked at uh, uh, Esau, the Edomites. He said, I, 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 I hate what they represent. I, I hate them. They enter in covenant agreements with Satan. And they hate me and my children. Well, if an Edomite believe, for Yah so loved the world that he gave his only God and son, and whosoever believeth. Because everyone is Israel, ain't Israel. So why everyone is Edomite got to be Edomite. As a people, what they represent, he hated. And as a people, what Jacob represented, he loved them. But all Israel who he loved ain't, ain't, ain't Israel. <laughs> And everyone is Edomite then. But people groups. People groups. So then you got to follow the salvation story through scandalous people. Because what was pure is the salvation plan that came from Yah and Yah alone. He saved us by himself like he said in Isaiah, I'm your savior. I came to rescue whoever going to believe in me. Mm -hmm. Him knowing the end from the beginning, he knew, he knew what a certain people represent and they got to escape their people. Those that did this to Israel, gun them down, shooting them, putting them in prison, dogging them out, straight devils, lying, switching history, the biggest lies to hit the planet earth. The Edomites. Biggest liars, change maps, change dates, just liars. Just uh, 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 the, the seed of their daddy. 100% real talk. You know what I'm scandalous Israel did? The only thing that was pure was the plan of Yah that came from him all by himself. To reconcile the believer. To reconcile the believer that's tainted by sin. Because Adam spent the will. He, he tainted the species humanity. All have sinned and come short. But there is people group. You, Israel do have an enemy. And because... The covenant agreement fell on Israel, but they wasn't equipped to live up to it, though. Just like the Edomite didn't. They wasn't equipped to live up to it. And the only way they can live up to it is if they have faith, the faith that Abraham had. But he made a promise to Abraham. And he keeping it. And he whooped Israel. For being sinful. Beat them down. Deuteronomy 28. Leviticus 26. Scattered them across the earth. Tore them up. And this evil people did it to them. They, they entered into a covenant. A, a federate. They became a confederacy. Together. Psalms. What is that? 87? I don't remember. Y'all look it up. Psalms 83. Whatever it was. But they enter into a covenant agreement with one another to, to, to snuff out Israel. Because they're evil. Snuff them out. Kill them off. And he going to pay them for it. So any Edomite that understand the fact you got, you got Edomites running around talking about, uh, 
talking about um, they got the, the scriptures twisted, but they say uh, uh, black folks is cursed of Ham. They got that was Canaan, and, and Canaan got dealt with already, right? Um, you know, and we're not ha Ham; we're Shemitic. But they say we cursed of Ham, right? Well, with that idea ideology that we're cursed of Ham because what Ham did, then you got to be cursed for what your people did too. Then, right? What y'all did to Israel. Y'all enslaved them and dogged them out and killing them. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Well, we ain't got nothing to do with Ham. <laughs> we really don't. But I'm just saying, if that's how you feel about it, at least you got one part right. We answer for our forefathers. Period. And we can, we can uh, erase the generational curses through repentance, through belief. Through belief. All of sin that comes short of his kabah, of his glory, that's why we got to study the scriptures and we can't be racist and not accept truth. You, you gotta, you gotta find out who's who, who you are and who, who other folks is. You, you got, you got to study the scriptures for in them. You think you have eternal life and you got to be honest and whatever you owe. Cause we all owe all have sinned. Whatever we owe, we got to be willing to pay it and make re reconciliation. We got to bow down and humble ourselves before our mighty Elohim. Everybody. And now that the scales is falling off the eyes of Israel, according to Romans, the 11th chapter, it's all through uh, Torah, the scriptures, y'all. But Israel is waking up and finding out who they are and whose they are. Then it would, it, 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 it the now, now Israel understand why they're in the situation that they're in, but now the most high is about to rescue them. They understand that. The 400 years in Americas. Yeah, you got Ishmael got their hands on Israel before uh, the Americas did. We serving our term in the Americas, but we've been getting whooped even before then. By some folks that's a part of the Confederacy and they gonna pay too. Or repent. But as people groups. The people groups is going to pay. And that's Israel and the Gentile. Israel going to pay. Those are the Israel that are not. In other words, don't have the faith of Abraham. They in trouble too. Everybody that's spiritually wicked is in trouble. People groups, he's coming back for his. And he's going to punish those that did that to them. And if anyone want to escape the punishment that's a part of the people group that did that to them, got to repent. And anyone want the reward of Abraham that's Israel, got to repent. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven, I forget their sins and I hear their land. For Yah so loved the world that he gave, and that gave is deep, y'all. And he gave him on a rescue mission that he gave his only begotten son, only begotten, only one. And the world was made flesh. I'm not talking about the prophets, nobody else. It was the body that the word lived in and the world was made flesh and dwelt among us. As we beheld his glory as, as of the only begotten of the father, the only begotten of the father, full of so-called grace and truth. The only begotten of the father. The word lived in one uh, 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 body that was born of that one version. And that was the only begotten. Israel, the word says, so y'all don't get confused. Israel, the, uh, 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 Torah teaches that Israel is the only begotten. And that's true. Because the Mashiach was Israel. He was born of the flesh of Israel. Bloodline 100, strong. He's Israel. Ain't he? Israel is real, and he's as real as Israel you can get. Ain't no realer Israel than the Mashiach, the only begotten. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Carnal commandments. I'm with it. Yeah. For whatever is worth. Don't ever forget the true problem, which is sin, an evil character, an evil nature, 
a rebellious nature. Everything uh, that, the, that the Most High said is a commandment. It's way more than 10. Everything he tell you to do. When he told, it was only one commandment in, in, in the garden. It was only one. Stay away from the devil. Don't eat of the tree. Back up off the snake. But she couldn't do that. So she bit. He couldn't bite Adam. Adam knew better. But Adam was weak for his wife. So he sold y'all out for his wife. One number one commandment, leave that tree alone. And one number one commandment in the, in, in the garden was to leave that tree alone. And they couldn't even do that. So when other commandments come, the Most High is dealing with carnal people. So he, he gave what was spiritual about the commandment was it came out of his mouth. The word went out of his mouth and didn't return void. It went out of his mouth, but he put it on stone because it represents the stony heart of man. And the man we talking about at that point is Israel. His chosen folks, they had a heart just like any other uh, human being. Twisted. So he put the commandments on stone and told them to keep it. And they couldn't keep it because it was on stone. And we got a rebellious nature. We got that Adam nature, that fallen nature. All of sin that comes short. We inherited that wickedness from Adam. So now commandments on stone. Well, the Mashiach came so that we could take it off of stone, giving us a heart of flesh, take it off of stone so the Most High can deal with us. And the only way he can do that is we had to be baptized into the Messiah's death. When he was talking to Abraham, he didn't say seeds as in many. Folks twist Torah and think it's Solomon and all that old type stuff. Think it's David. No, it's the seed. It came out of the loins of David. And it was one seed. When he made the promise to Abraham, it was seed singular. That's why salvation is in the body of the Mashiach. And when we're baptized into salvation, we're baptized into his body because he's the one. He's the resurrection. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Most High but by him. Period. Get deeper. He's the word. And the only way you can have a relationship with the word, the word God is, is his, 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 his day, his, 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 uh, what, what, God is due word. It was the word that was in the beginning that was walking in the garden when they ran and hid because they, they, they sided with the devil. It was the word that was walking in the garden. That same word came down 42 generations and was made flesh and dwelt among us. Same word that 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 uh, 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 Adam went against came to give us a shot at it. So now we can't blame Adam no more because <laughs> now that same word came and knocked on the door of your heart. He said, "I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear the word and open and let me in, I'll come sup with it. I'll make you alive. I'll give you the words of eternal life. Because man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yah. The word came and knocked. Now he's in you, trying to reason with you for your soul." And it ain't burst based on no carnal commandment. The carnal commandment is the word on stone. He took the stone out the way. And he's writing it on the fleshly tables of your heart so he can reason with you and deal with you so you can have a spirit of repentance and walk away from sin. Denounce sin and accept him. Quit blaming Adam. It came full circle, baby. The word came on back. For Yah so loved the world. Mm -hmm. He loved that he gave. He did love make you do something that he gave. Who that word gave is loaded all the way down to a murder beef. They couldn't take his life. He had to lay it down. He never sinned. The stress level that he under uh, undertook in the garden of Gethsemane. He, he his he, his blood vessels was bursting as he was sweating and, and, and 
and, and, and bl blood was coming out of his sweat gland. That is a stress level of death. But since he did not sin, because the wages of sin is death, and he never sinned, he couldn't even die. He said, they didn't take my life. I laid it down. When he was on that torture stake, he said, I yield my spirit. He had to yield. He had to leave the body. Death couldn't snatch him and pull him out of it. Death had no dominion over him. <laughs> For Yah so loved the world that he gave. The, the word gave is, is love. His only begotten son. Then when you find out in the world was made flesh. <laughs> then you find out all those prophecies that he said. The, the, the Most High said, I'm your savior. Besides me, there is no savior. When you get that revelation, oh my goodness. Being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself. Now you understand that, 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 that he gave his only begotten son. He gave the, the tabernacle. He don't dwell in, 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 ta in tents and tabernacles made with hands. Prepare me a body. He gave his only begotten son, which then gives you your assignment. What manner of love is this that we should be called the sons of Yah, the children of Yah? Because now we're supposed to be give ourselves. Uh, I beseech you by the mercy of Yah that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Yah, and is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, because we got some stinking thinking. You want true commandment? You want the true Shabbat, the true Sabbath? Like Hebrews 4 was trying to explain to you that, that, that the Shabbat was renamed in David in Psalms 95. Today you hear my voice harden not your heart as they did in the provocation. When you hear the word, don't harden your heart like Adam did. Obey him. Be submissive to his word. Don't grieve the word. Don't grieve his spirit. Yeah, the word is going to fight against your flesh. The flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to another, so you can't do what you want to do. He gave his only begotten son. Because then he turned around and called us son. He's giving us two. We're the light of the world. He's giving us to the world. We're the light of the world. And if and, 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 and light cannot be hid. You don't put it under a bushel. You put it up so it can light up the house. Israel mouth. He's pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Israel is waking up, finding out who they are, even though they're trying to gun us down, shut us up, imprison us, kill us. It's the Ruah. He's pouring out his Ruah. We speaking up. We crying, Alma Father. Can't be stopped. Speaking under anointing that people can't even comprehend. Because <laughs> it's the Ruah HaKadosh. In the flesh, we got this treasure in earthen vessels. Yah is up to something. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, compelling us to go out <laughs> into the highways and hedges and compel folks to come in. Wake up, Israel. <laughs> Take your post. The one that hated the most. Stand up. The Ruah is in you. He's pouring out. He's waking you up. The scales is falling off Israel's eye. They're not, they're not falling off and they wake up mean and, and hatred. Vengeance is the most high as he going to recompense. It happened to you because he allowed it. In Deuteronomy 28, he said, just like it was going to please me to bless you, it's going to please me to whoop your dog on hard-headed behinds. Quit blaming folk and blame yourself. Look at the forefathers and apologize to the most high for them. And then turn around and apologize to the most high for yourself. Because if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. I forget their sins and I hear their land. And he's about to heal your land. Wake up, Israel. The bus is coming. And you better be ready. Don't, don't get on that bus and your, and your, and your garment ain't on. 
Clean yourself up. Be a wise virgin. Have oil in your lamp. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth, the believer, lives the life. The, because they're a believer, they, they're called out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Let not filthy communications proceed out of your mouth. The believer is different. He's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Come on, somebody. Y'all wasn't calling uh, a, a, a cussing, uh, evil, a vengeful person with, with, with fringes on. Talking about keep the commandments. Quit being scandalous and evil. <laughs> what, no, Adam didn't have no doggone fringes. For y'all so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What do the fringes represent? What do the Shabbat represent? What do the feast days represent? For Yah so loved the world that he gave him a begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You ain't got to be scared of the devil, his children, or the threats. <laughs> whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Y'all about to tear this joker up for you. Get in your spiritual Goshen. When he was tearing up Egypt, he protected his children. Come out from among them and be you separate. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Kepha, they call him Peter, said, you know what? It's ever true that the Most High is not a respecter person, but he's calling those out of all nations to repentance. He kept telling him, nah, Most High said, kill and eat. He said, nah, I ain't never, ain't nothing common nor unclean. Most High said, quit calling what I clean common and unclean. Better learn some more word. I know you melanated, and I know you've been hated too. Ain't no debate about that. <laughs> Y'all know what he's doing. And y'all know he used carnal. He dealing with carnal people. So he used carnal circumstances. Carnal land. Yeah. Carnal. As allegories and stories and parables. Leading to the Yah man, the Mashiach. And then the Mashiach came, lived a perfect example, and fulfilled it. The part pertaining to you being able to receive the Ruach HaKadosh and become a new creation in him. That part. And then he's going to deliver you from your enemy. And please believe me, you got an enemy. They proved it. But those that believe don't have to be your enemy no more. And if you believe and repent, you ain't got to move like Yah's enemy either. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Next verse say, he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. But that the world through him might be saved. How many of y'all want to be saved? Let's repent. Because the kingdom of Yahuwah is at hand. I do. Let's pray. Spirit of the Most High, we love you and thank you for this opportunity to glean in your word. Believe in you at your word. Thanking you for revelation of your word. Uh, continue to perpetrate truth uh, through your children, to your children, for your children. Deliver us from ourselves. Uh, you sent your son into the world uh, that if we believed in him, what was in him was your word. And the word was made flesh. We believe you. The word came to see us. Peekaboo, we thank you, Yah, for coming to see your people. Came down 42 generations to see about us. And we bow down. Hosanna, save us. 
changes into your image. Send us through the metamorphosis process by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what's acceptable and good in the, your perfect will. We submit right now, repent from all sins, deal with the devil, deal with the devil and his children, expose all his lies, tear down his kingdom and exalt yours and save your people. We'll be careful to give you the Kabah, not only now, but forevermore. In the matchless name of your future, Hamashiach, we only pray. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And all may. That was the lesson for this evening. We pray that the word found you, got all in your business, and blessed you real good. This is the third time I preach this. It seems like it get better and better to me every time I touch it. I preach this, you know, a few times because it never got something keep happening to it. So I preached it again. Y'all push the share button because I believe we got it this time. In celebration to this message finally going out, push the share button. And I'm pretty sure Donna is happy that I didn't have no gerbils in this one. Y'all continue to uh, push the share button. Um, if I want to thank anyone that's a supporter of the ministry. If the, if the word is blessing you and you're changing and you've been a supporter of the ministry, first of all, I, I want to say thank you. And, and, and I want to thank you even for Yah. Yah thanks you. He's going to thank you himself because you can't beat him giving. And the word teaches don't muzzle out the mouth of the ox that tread out the corn. If it's treaded in his good word, um, and, you, and you guys have been so into this. I thank you. And if it's good word to you and you haven't and you would like to, we would love to enter into a covenant agreement with you concerning the perpetration of the word in these last and evil days. All you got to do is get the cash app. You get the cash app and put in uh, dollar sign Yahuda Israel, Y-A-H-U-D-A-H-Y-I-S-R-A-E-L. Dollar sign Yehuda Israel, and you can sow your seed. You can enter a, a covenant partnership and be someone that sows into uh, the ministry on a regular. We would definitely welcome you, and may Yah even bless you uh, for your consideration. If you'd like to talk about the word, we, 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 we would be more than happy. You just heard the word right now. Um, we like to talk about it before we close, but we do that on a conference line. So if you'd like to join us right now, all you got to do is dial 302. 202-1102, extension 815-648. Again, 302-202-1102, extension 815-648. I meet y'all over there if you want to talk about the word. Thanks for chiming in and hanging out with us. Y'all be Baruch and Baraka Shalom. I'm God.